Hey guys, in today's video, I'll be doing another tropical update, and man, uh, look, th today is September 10th, and you know, that's the true peak day of the hurricane season. We are uh, officially at September 10th, and the Atlantic is responding fully with two tropical storms active right now, tropical storms Paulette and tropical storm Rene, um, and uh, we've got uh, three areas of... Uh, and within the two days, we have three areas of disturbance, three areas of disturbed weather. And this first one, uh, disturbance one, is actually pretty close towards um, the northern central Bahamas and Florida. And this one has, uh, as of the 2 p.m. advisory, has a 10% chance of formation within the next two days and a 40% chance of formation within the next five days. It says a large area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms centered... Uh, a couple of hundred miles east of the central Bahamas is associated with a surface trough of low pressure. The system is forecast to move westward, uh, uh, crossing the Bahamas and Florida on Friday, and moving, uh, mo moving, uh, can't, uh, and moving into the eastern Gulf of Mexico over the weekend. Upper-level winds are expected to become conducive for development, and a tropical depression could form while the system moves slowly west west northwestward over the eastern gulf of mexico early next week and then we have the second disturbance which is in the gulf of mexico that one's most likely not gonna um do much of anything though it will be th so the direction that it'll be going is continuing to uh move towards the west and southwest and go and have its best chance of formation more over within the um <coughs> Oh, so you guys can see it better. It'll have this area will have a better um, time of develop, uh, development as it heads more towards the eastern, or sorry, the western Gulf of Mexico um, within the next five days. It has a 10 to 20 percent chance of formation, so that's not um, too much of a worry. Honestly, I doubt this disturbance also will form into uh, any tropical system or named storm. But then we have this third disturbance here that has just come off the coast of Africa. This is the main disturbance we really, really need to watch because this, uh, for one hand, for one thing, could uh, be a very long track system. There is the decent potential of what the models have, uh, the models have uh, been actually really agreeing upon already, is that uh, I don't think, it, do it doesn't seem according to the models that it will be going out to sea. I think it will, it seems to be uh, moving uh, more south and impacting more of the, more land, and so, uh, if we actually look at the five-day graphical, tro graphical tropical weather outlook, you can see uh, there's that um, orange area of development for this first disturbance. So it'll be moving over the central northern Bahamas, very southern Florida, into the Gulf. And then there's this second disturbance that I doubt will develop even within this area. Honestly, I think we'll just stay as um, kind of a maybe a little vigorous amount of um, the thunderstorms and gusty winds, but I doubt this will become anything. But then here's that big area for the for the, the third disturbance. You can see it's generally going to be moving westward, and the key thing, um, especially as we head into this weekend, into early to middle next week, the key thing is that uh, to see how quickly this uh, system will develop, and if it develops quickly, whether or not it will go, uh, as it gets closer towards the Leeward Islands, whether it'll, it'll go north of Puerto Rico or south of Puerto Rico. And and even maybe it could go directly over Puerto Rico and Hispaniola and Cuba, but um, uh, it's uh, definitely going to be another one of those systems that is going to be very, very tricky to figure out what it'll do, especially early on. Um, because if it goes south of Puerto Rico and goes into the Caribbean, um, the Gulf Coast of the United States potentially will be more of uh, under the gun for this system. If it goes north of Puerto Rico, it may be that the east coast, somewhere along the east coast, maybe the entire east coast could be more on, under the gun for this system. So this will be a really key thing to watch as we uh, continue to monitor this system going into um, the end of this week, into the weekend, and into next week. And then there's actually this fourth disturbance that doesn't show up on the two-day graphical um, outlook because it has a 0% chance of formation within, within the next two days, but a 40% chance of formation within the next five days. And this one, honestly, it uh, could potentially actually form as well um, as we go into next week, uh, especially going into early next week, uh, but especially going into the early to middle part of next week for this system. 
Um, so uh, that's really a look at um, everything that's going on in the Atlantic. It is definitely responding to being the very peak of the season. Now, um, Paulette, by the way, Paulette and Renee, just to go over some um, the quick uh, update facts about the two systems as of the 2 p.m. advisory. Paulette is a tropical storm right now with 50 mile per hour sustained winds, pressures at 998 millibars, moving west northwest at 10 miles per hour. So Paulette has started to pick up speed actually over the past few days because it was like crawling along, um, especially over the uh, over the first couple days after it was named. And then here's Renee, uh, is also at 50 miles per hour, though, um, and Renee, actually, here's the thing about the two tropical storms right now, Paulette has kind of weakened a bit um, over the day today, but it is forecast actually to strengthen and potentially even become a hurricane as it's getting close to Bermuda. Renee, on the other hand, is strengthening right now, and there's a slight chance that maybe Renee could become a hurricane, but I doubt it will. And But Renee um, also will be just going out to sea and actually not even impacting really any land whatsoever. So this Renee will be a really true fish storm. Um, Renee right now is at 50 miles per hour, pressure's at 1,000 1, millibars, and it's moving west-northwest at 12 miles per hour. So Paulette and Renee are both moving in the same direction. Renee is moving slightly faster. Um, and actually, let's uh, show you the cone forecast for both systems. Uh, so you can see Paulette will be continuing to move towards the north and west, maybe curving more towards the um, uh, curving more towards the uh, north northwest. Actually, right now Paulette's moving sorry to the west northwest. Renee's moving just to the northwest. Um, Paulette will end up moving towards the northwest, and then as it and then it starts to curve more towards directly west, and then curve directly north as it's getting near Bermuda, and then that's actually the area where it has the best chance of becoming a hurricane. And honestly, I do think Paulette has the very good potential to become a hurricane and maybe a, um, a fairly strong hurricane or a very, at least a very large, intense-looking hurricane, um, at least uh, what the models are showing for Paulette right now. So Paulette does look to potentially become a hurricane and will start to resume on its strengthening trend, most likely, especially as we head into tomorrow and Saturday, and then from there it'll just continue to strengthen as it's continuing towards the north and west and then directly north. Um, but it doesn't look like Paulette, honestly, will be, have any impacts towards the East Coast of the United States or the United States at all. Um, it will mostly be impacting Bermuda and then curving out to sea. So um, with both tropical storms right now, that is a, that's the plus side for both these tropical storms. Not so much for like all these other areas of potential development, especially for this third disturbance. Now, uh, here's the forecast cone um, for Renee. You can see uh, for around 8 p.m. Saturday and um, even 8 a.m. Saturday, it seems uh, Saturday, uh, the, the um, two days from now on Saturday, once we get to Saturday, Saturday will be the best day, uh, the most prime day for rain to really become a hurricane if it does so um, try to become one. Um, and it is on a uh, strengthening trend, so it will continue to strengthen. We'll see um, what it'll do and um, how it interacts with the warm waters and um, everything and the prime environment it actually is in. So there is a, a, a little bit of a chance that it could become a hurricane. I'm not fully I'm not fully on board with the fact that it will become a hurricane. I don't think so, and maybe if it does, it'll be very brief, and then it'll just weaken back down to a travel storm and just continue to weaken from there and then dissipate. So uh, that is the that is the current uh, look at what the NHC is tracking right now. It's um, the most the busiest the NHC has been tracking for the tropics all year. So it's uh, crazy stuff. Uh, now let's go to tropical tidbits, and I'll show you what um, I'll show you what travel storm Paulette and Renee look like on satellite imagery. Here is Paulette currently. Oh, we gotta let this load in. Um, got a that's a bit slow. But uh, you can see from what uh, I am showing you, um, Paulette continues to have a lots of good amounts of uh, strong, tall cloud tops, so lots of good convection, has decent outflow, and the convection is starting to really blow up um, right around and over the center. Uh, earlier, in fact, actually it was kind of a um, bit more bare and the center was kind of exposed, but uh, but it has made a definitely a comeback and it is looking really good right now. Um, I do think it will start to strengthen again quite shortly and, um, well, at least pretty soon um, over the next day or so. So um, that'll be something to really uh, keep our eyes on. But uh, again, Paulette is looking very, very good right now. Now uh, here's Tropical Storm Renee, 
and oh my god, I want this to load in again. And Renee had uh, had a decent blow-up of convection, had some decent convection with it around the center, even though the convection is, is generally with Renee displaced toward more of the west of the center. Um, it has now, though, started to really decrease in convection, and uh, it's not really looking too good. Um, so I'm surprised that it's on a strengthening trend right now, but, I mean, hey, it could turn around, especially going into tonight, and uh, we wake up tomorrow, and Renee looks really good and is even stronger. So I don't know, we'll see what happens with both these tropical storms. Um, now let's go and um, actually let's first show you kind of what the um, – models are kind of trending at with uh here's paulette's model intensity guidance you can see paulette as it continues um over the next uh as we head over the next two two and a half days or so um it will be on a kind of a steady trend of being right around the same intensity as as it is but then as we get towards day three so um around sunday uh, it will start to strengthen a lot more, and all of the models pretty much, except for a select few, do bring it and uh, have it becoming a hurricane, a Category 1 hurricane. Even a decent amount get it towards a strong Category 1, even maybe a Category 2. Um, and then two models get it into major hurricane status, Category 3. I mean, who knows? That could happen. But right now, I think it's definitely, um, it's definitely likely that Paulette does become at least a Category 1 hurricane, maybe a Category 2 hurricane. I don't think it will become a major hurricane, just especially where it will potentially become a hurricane and just where it will be around that time and where it will be going. So um, I think really Category 1, Category 2 is the best bet for Paulette. Um, I definitely think it will at least be a Category 1 hurricane. Um, now... Let's look at Renee and show you the um, forecast model intensity guidance for Renee. You can see really all the models are in good agreement that Renee is kind of will uh, hold its intensity for the moment over the next at least 12, 24 hours, and then it'll continue to um, go up in intensification, strengthen more, and then there is some potential that Renee could become a Category 1 hurricane as the NEC's cone um, did show. And with, there's that one model, the H, um, is this the H, no, it's not the H1, it's, uh, the H, is that the H, H, N, I, or H, M, N, I, anyway, in any case, this model, of course, likes to go bonkers with tropical systems the majority of the time, so this one's going crazy with it, getting to category two, three, four, hurricane status, uh, I highly doubt that'll happen, <laughs> definitely, I, I really do not think that will happen, I think Renee will peak out at, a uh, most likely a strong travel storm, maybe we category one hurricane. Um, so now, finally, I'll show you um, what the models are showing. Uh, this is the 12Z run of the GFS, the newest run of the GFS, mo GFS model. Uh, and so there's the North Atlantic, show you the entire overview. Um, let's see if I can get a good uh, view on this. There we go. Um, so there's Paulette and Renee pretty much right in the center of your screen. As I move this forward in time, Oh, we gotta let this load in. Um, you can see that uh, Renee continues to move out to sea. Paulette continues towards the north and west, um, and then that Africa disturbance continues to move in, uh, off of Africa and into the Atlantic and starts to get better organized. And there's actually, I believe this is that um, disturbance behind the Africa disturbance, which is this one. Um, this uh, next disturbance that's um, pretty much right behind the, Afri the current Africa disturbance that's, um, that has a high chance of development. This one could also become its own potential tropical system, but uh, we'll see. But there you can see um, Paulette gets uh, pretty damn close through and pretty much right near Bermuda and then uh, curves out to sea and um, dissipates. And then there's that um, high chance of development area. As you can see, we track it. It goes, as of right now, the GFS is showing it kind of going more south of Puerto Rico, going through the southern and central le le um, uh, Leeward Islands, goes south of Puerto Rico, kind of does a little bit of a interaction with Hispaniola, a um, bit of an in interaction with Cuba, and then goes into the Gulf and becomes fairly strong, becomes um, uh, get downs into the upper 950 millibars, and that's a very strong system. That's a... Uh, category 3 hurricane, I believe, and then it uh, hits the Florida Panhandle and rides up right along the east coast, um, just inland of the east coast, and goes all the way up through um, New England. It impacts uh, southern and central New England especially, and then starts to move out to sea into the very north Atlantic. So 
that is what the GFS is showing. That'll be very, very interesting to watch and see if that does come true. But uh, really the point is, especially with um, what uh, the model is showing for the Africa disturbance, everyone, especially from um, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, all the way up through Maine, as of right now it seems, should be on the highest alert for the Africa disturbance. But honestly, everyone from Texas through Maine should keep an eye out for the Africa disturbance because it really can go anywhere. Um, so that's uh, really, really um, important to take note of. Now let's look at the European model, show you what the European model is showing. Uh, the newest run, the 12Z run, has fully come in. So this is the newest um, newest up, up to update of the European. There you can see Paulette and Rene. Uh, it shows Paulette becoming fairly strong, and then there's Rene just kind of fading out. And then what's interesting is that it shows the Africa disturbance more uh, just heading out to sea. And then there's that other disturbance, it seems, um, that comes in, that comes off of the coast of Africa behind that Africa, uh, that um, first Africa disturbance. Um, so that's very interesting that the Europeans showing that more of out to sea. So it really, really still, there's still a lot of questions for that Africa disturbance, that major Africa disturbance, will it go more out to sea? Will it go farther south and potentially more towards the U.S. and impact the U.S.? Everything, and there's all that potential. It, it, literally everything is on the table for that disturbance. Uh, now let's show you the CMC model. And uh, let's take this back to the beginning of the run. And uh, this is also the newest run of the CMC, the 12Z run of CMC. You can see there's Paulette and Renee pretty much in the center of your screen. Renee kind of continues out to sea and falls apart. There's Paulette getting very strong, kind of impacting Bermuda and then goes out to sea. And, hmm, it, uh, the CMC is not exactly showing the African disturbance doing much of anything. Well, actually, it's kind of showing more the, uh, the disturbance behind this high chance African dis disturbance becoming more of something um, later on as we head towards September 20th. Uh, so that's very interesting. Um, we're really going to have to just continue to monitor this high chance after disturbance as we head into the end of the week weekend into early next week. It does seem that the GFS, honestly, I got to say, has the best handle on this high chance after disturbance. Um, so really, I think uh, we really just got to kind of trust this GFS more the most with the after disturbance right now. Um, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, the GFS kind of actually has started to become a bit more, um, a bit more consistent in a way with showing the Africa disturbance impacting the East Coast or at least Florida, um, for at the at the least. Um, so, um, over the past day or so, so um, that that's very interesting. Uh, so we'll see if the GFS continues to um, be consistent with showing the Africa disturbance impacting the East Coast or somewhere along the East Coast. Um, so. Uh, really just got to keep an eye out for that. Uh, now, i got to show you, we are officially, as of today, um, I saw this earlier this today on Twitter, that we are officially in a La Nina. So, yes, we are officially in a La Nina. We are in a weak La Nina, and it's continuing, to, it seems, to get stronger. Um, so as of right now, we're in a weak La Nina. That'll, we'll see how that affects moving forward the rest what we have left of the hurricane season and then especially what it'll do for our upcoming fall and winter seasons for the u.s um, so that'll be very interesting but yes we are officially in la nina um that uh, that is a uh, huge that, that is uh, very 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 um fascinating all right finally let's go look at the wikipedia page for the 2020 atlantic hurricane season we have had a total of 18 depressions, 17 total storms, 5 hurricanes, and 1 major hurricane. Um, and we've had a total of 117 deaths so far this season. The total damage is somewhere around $15 billion in damage. It's pretty much it, uh, the exact more or less amount is somewhere around $14.67 billion in damage, but uh, just rounding up. Um, so it has been a fairly damaging season so far. Not not really anything too crazy um the only the really the main crazy thing about the season is just how active and how many name systems we've seen this so far this season in fact let me zoom this in here and really the first like 
few words of the 2020 Atlantic Hurricane season Wikipedia page. It says, the 2020 Atlantic Hurricane season has featured record activity. So, um, yeah, I mean, to put it bluntly, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much straight up what has gone on so far this season. We've gone through all the way through the R name, and we're looking at the um, S, having the S name quite soon. So um, we're just going to continue to see this record, act, record activity continue, and I definitely expect us to enter the Greek alphabet the latest by September 25th. I think by September 25th especially, we should definitely be in the Greek alphabet, and or at least starting the Greek alphabet. Um, so again, yeah, we've gone through the R name, Rene, that's the uh, 17th name storm on the list, um, and there's 21 names on the pre-designated list, so we're definitely going to we're definitely going to see the rest of this naming list and definitely go into the Greek alphabet. Um, the next name on the list is Sally. We'll most likely see that be named as we head into the latter part of the weekend into early next week. And then we'll see what uh, when we'll get Teddy, Vicky, and Wilfred. I think we'll see Teddy, v Vicky, and Wilfred especially. I think um, it's likely that we'll see the last three names on the list as we head into um, next week and the week after. Um, so we'll most likely just be checking off the remaining four names on the list pretty quickly and pretty soon. So um, that is the um, update that I have for you guys today on the tropics, on how the Atlantic is doing with the tropics. It's still, again, going crazy with the amount of tropical activity um, we're monitoring. And um, it looks like we'll definitely be getting into the Greek alphabet quite soon. Um, so, and again, I guess for, as of right now, I guess from for people living in Texas through Maine, um, so all of those go coastal states the gulf coast up through the entire east coast including florida just everyone as of right now make sure you are paying attention to that um, africa disturbance that has a high chance of development because um it is seeming more and more having more and more potential um to impact the u.s somewhere along the east coast or maybe the gulf coast somewhere around somewhere in that it, within those areas so um just really, everyone living there, just please um, mon keep monitoring the system and keeping up to date with what that system is doing. There is still that chance that it does go out to sea. We'll see. Um, the models still are showing either it's hitting the U.S. somewhere or going out to sea. The models still don't have a good full handle on where the system will go, though all three models, I do believe, that do kind of show the system, especially the GFS and Euro. CMC not so much, but still, um, models do kind of uh, show that system a bit. But uh, that's uh, the video I have for you guys today. I uh, really hope you guys enjoyed um, what I showed you in this video. If you did enjoy, please uh, remember to, if you want to, like and comment. If you're a first-time viewer and you enjoyed what you saw, please consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.